How's it going everyone? Welcome to the channel and welcome to another Elden Ring tier list video. Now my previous weapons tier list video got over one and a half million views so far, which is absolutely nuts. And since that video, I've gotten tons of feedback. I got a bunch of comments asking me where certain weapons were and why I didn't include more weapons in this list. So here in part two, I'm going to be including a lot of weapons that I didn't cover in my first video. So if there's a weapon in this video that didn't make the list, then odds are it's probably back in that first video. So be sure to check that out. Now with that first video I got a lot of hate comments and I made like one or two mistakes in that video and people were just tearing me a new one so please keep in mind I'm only one person. I'm doing all these experiments myself and these videos take me days and days of editing. I do do research for each weapon before I make these videos. It's just some things slip through the cracks so if I do make mistakes I apologize. I'm just ranking these weapons based off of my experiences and my play testing and I'm just doing this for fun to just sort of help people give them an idea of what weapons are easy to use and there are tons of different play styles and different builds and and i'm not at all saying that my list is the be all end all if i rank a weapon at d tier or c tier it could easily get bumped up to a or s tier depending on your build but in this video i'm going to be ranking these weapons based off of how easy they are as soon as you get them i'm ranking them based off of maybe using one ash of war or maybe one spell and i'm not including builds where you have to activate four or five different spells to buff up yourself before you run into the battle. That's just way too much effort. I'm not going to rank a weapon higher if you have to use three or four spells just to get it to reach its full potential. I'm going to rank these weapons based off of how good they are with as little effort as possible. Because honestly, the average player isn't going to jump through all those hoops. They just want to pick up a weapon and use said weapon. And then the final note I'm going to make is that this is a PvE list. This list isn't based on PvP. I was originally going to include PvP, but it just ended up being a nightmare. I would get two or three good matches and then I'd get like seven or eight absolutely awful matches where players would just wreck me in like two seconds. I was getting really inconsistent data when I'm trying to play with each weapon and test them out. Meanwhile, my opponent is out for blood and they have just the most overpowered builds possible. So PvP was just a disaster. I'm not including PvP in these rankings. So with all that said, let's go ahead and get right into the list. All right, so the first four weapons that are in this list were in my previous video as well, but since the update that came out earlier this week that changed a lot of the weapons, and since I put a lot more play time and testing into these weapons, I feel like they're changing spots and they're going to go up higher than they were in my previous list. So starting off the list, we have the Bloodhound's Fang. Now in my previous video, I ranked this B tier, and as a lot of people pointed out to me, it actually has a second follow-up ability that I wasn't even aware of. I thought this weapon was good just on its own, but now that I know it has a follow-up ability, I think it's even better. So with the Bloodhound's Fang, it's just overall a really good weapon. It's a weapon that you can get pretty early on. It does bleed damage, and bleed has been sort of the meta since Elden Ring came out. Bleed is just very, very powerful, so it does do bleed damage. So with the Bloodhound's Fang, unlike a lot of the other weapons that are on this list, you can actually put whatever grease on it. You can put like fire grease, or lightning grease, or frost grease, or different incan Incantations like the blood flames. You can put all these different buffs on the weapon to make it even stronger. And then its special ability is this dash move where you lunge forward, slash, and then immediately dash backwards to get out of the way of danger. And then it has this really cool follow up attack where you dash forward, sort of like the Bloodhound step, and you do this really big follow up swing, and it can do a high amount of damage. So if you time it right, you can actually dodge and avoid a lot of enemies' follow up moves. You can get up close and personal to an enemy, dash out of the way behind you, and then as they do a follow-up swing, you can basically teleport out of the way and then hit them with a counter swing. It's a really mean combo. This thing has so much potential and I think it is way better than I originally gave it credit for. I originally gave it B tier, but now I'm actually going to move it up to A tier. Now, the only thing that's holding it back from S tier, in my opinion, is that I think there's a bit of a learning curve. Compared to a lot of the other weapons that I'm going to be putting in S tier, they take little to no effort and pretty much anyone can use them. You just use their left trigger ability and the weapon basically does all the work for you. With the Bloodhound's Fang, there is some skill involved and it's definitely going to be a lot harder for the average player to use this weapon but if you master this weapon I think it's an easy S tier but because of that bit of a learning curve 
I'm just going to keep it at A tier. But it's a great weapon, and I highly recommend everybody check it out. Really, really good sword. So up next on the list is the Envoy's Longhorn. Now in the previous video, I ranked it at A tier. I said it was a really good weapon. It does a great job at staggering bosses and doing just crazy damage to bosses. But after playing with it a lot more, I think this weapon is even better than what I originally thought. I think this weapon is just an easy weapon for anyone to use. It takes little to no effort at all. All you basically have to do is spam the left trigger ability and it does all the work for you. It shoots out tons of different bubbles and the bubbles have a little bit of tracking to them. So if there's a bunch of enemies, it struggles a little bit. The bubbles get a little confused and it doesn't know who to lock on to. But when it comes to bosses, this thing hits hard just on its own. But if you use its left trigger ability, it does a great job at staggering bosses and knocking them down. This thing is so good that if you'd manage to stagger a boss and knock it down, I wouldn't even bother hitting the boss's weak spot. I would just honestly just keep spamming the bubble attack. And in this video, I'm actually going to put it up at S tier because I think it's just an easy weapon. It does high damage. Anyone can use it. Takes little to no skill and it's just really good. So up next is another weapon that was in my last video and it's the Runes Greatsword. Now in my previous video, I ranked it C tier, but earlier this week, they had a huge update that completely changed the meta of all the different weapons. They had a huge buff to Colossal Swords and Colossal Weapons. Their attack speed has been increased. They lowered their recovery time for when you're swinging, so now it's easier to get back to your original stance after you do a big swing. They increased the two-handed attack damage for all Colossal Swords and Colossal Weapons, and they increased the physical block rate and guard boost for the Colossal Swords and Colossal Weapons, the Great Swords, Great Hammers, Great axes, spears, and halberds. So all of the colossal weapons got a major buff, and I think in this update, a lot of the colossal weapons are just way, way better than they previously were. So in my previous video, I ranked the Runes Greatsword a C, but now I think it's so good, I think it's up at A tier, because a lot of my problems with it was that it just had a really slow swing speed, and there was just a number of different factors where I didn't think it was good as some of the other weapons. But now, after all these buffs, I think this is a great weapon to use, especially if you're two-handing, it can block a lot of damage. And honestly, two-handing this weapon is better than a lot of small shields and even medium shields. And it works as basically a shield and a sword all in one. It has a crazy powerful left trigger ability, and I think it just all around got improved across the board. It was a pretty good weapon before the patch, but now it's even better, so that's why I'm putting it up at A tier. So next up on the list is the Grafted Blade. Now the Grafted Blade was also in my previous video. I think I put it at B or C tier, and this is a pretty good weapon. It received all of the Colossal Weapon buffs, so now you can swing this weapon even faster. And specifically to the Grafted Blade itself, it got a damage boost. Now this is one of the few weapons that specifically got a damage boost. So this weapon in particular is even stronger than before. It's one of the better Colossal Weapons in the game, and its left trigger ability gives you a plus five buff to all of your stats across the board. So that's really handy to activate before you go into any sort of encounter. It works really well in tandem with other weapons. Maybe you want to activate that buff and then switch to a different weapon. There are tons of different opportunities that you can do with this weapon and it's all around just a better weapon now. Those buffs really really helped it out and now I'm going to put it up at A tier. So up next we have the, what I think is called the Antspur Rapier. Now this is a thrusting sword. I call it the poking stick. It's just this long sword that acts kind of like a needle slash dagger. And what's so cool about this weapon is that it has the opportunity to stack multiple passive effects at the same time. So with this weapon, for example, I like to put on the Seppuku Ash of War, which activates bleed damage. And when you put on this Ash of War, it will give you the option to put on other effects as well. So by default, this weapon has Scarlet Rot build up, and then it also gives you the option to do poison damage. So you essentially get three different abilities all in one. When you activate the Ash of War, it causes bleed damage, it does poison build up, and it does Scarlet Rot build up all at the same time. Now on its own, this weapon's okay, but this thing really shines when you dual wield it. In a new game plus, you can get two of them to stack it even more, and it does tons of damage. But what I like to do is pair it with the Frozen Needle Thrusting Sword. So in my right hand, I'll have one weapon, and in the left hand, I'll have the other. And and combining it with the frozen needle, that lets me do frost build up and bleed and poison and scarlet rot all at the same time. So this weapon has a lot of potential. Now I'm not going to take dual wielding into consideration because I'm ranking this weapon on its own. And on its own, I think it's just 
okay. It's a good weapon. It's a good choice to use. I'm not going to give it S tier or A tier. I think it deserves a solid B tier. And like I said, it can be paired pretty well with other weapons as well. When you pair it with other weapons, I think it's like S or A tier. But on its own, I think it's B tier just because of all the different potentials that it has for all the different status buildups. So up next is another Colossal weapon, which is the Axe of Godfrey. When I saw that all the Colossal weapons were getting a big buff, this is one of the weapons that I wanted to test out because before the update, I thought this weapon just really sucked. I didn't think it was that good. And I gotta say, after the update, it's still not really that good. I think this weapon kind of blows, to be honest, because in comparison to a lot of the other Colossal weapons that got buffed and they have faster casting and faster swing speeds and stuff, I feel like the Axe of Godfrey kind of got left behind because its animations are just so slow. Its left trigger ability like slams down on the ground and gives you a attack buff and it changes your heavy swings into slashes. The problem is that it's just so unbelievably slow that when you're in mid animation the bosses are just so much faster than you. You could be mid swing and odds are you're probably going to get hit before you can finish the swing. Now with a lot of the other weapons after the update they've given you the ability to cancel your attack mid animation. That way if you decided you've made a mistake you can just sort of roll out of the way and avoid avoid getting hit. Well, you can't do that with the Axe of Godfrey. If you decide to swing or you decide to activate your left trigger ability, you're stuck in that animation. And because this thing takes so long to use all the different animations, it's just got nothing in comparison to the other colossal weapons. I really hope that they buff this weapon, but as it stands right now, I'm actually going to put it at D tier because I feel like it just got left in the dust by all the other colossal weapons that are on this list. So up next, we have the Bastard Stars Flail. Now, a couple people recommended that I put this on the list in my last video, so here it is. Now, this flail is what you get from defeating Estelle, and this weapon is really unique looking. I really love the design of this because it's like a bunch of little small planets all connected to each other, and you're basically just swinging planets around. And its left trigger ability does this really big wave of just magic, and then all the magic explodes. So this is really good at keeping some bosses at bay. It will stagger some of the bosses. If there's a bunch of smaller enemies running up to you. This is really good at keeping all them at bay as well. It does a really big area of effect damage. If you knock down one of the bigger bosses and stagger them like a dragon or something, it's going to do a ton of damage because that huge wave is going to explode multiple times and hit them for basically the full amount. And overall, it's a pretty good weapon. I don't think it's as good as the Wing of Estelle, which I ranked pretty high in my previous video, but I don't really have any complaints with this weapon. I think it's pretty good across the board, but I'm going to put it at B tier because I think it's pretty good. It's just not anything spectacular. It's not going to be like insta-killing bosses or instantly staggering bosses. It's just a good weapon to use. It's just not an amazing weapon to use. So up next is the Dark Moon Great Sword. Now this is another weapon that a lot of people wanted me to talk about in my previous video. And honestly, this one just barely didn't make the list last time. And this was just a really good weapon to use before the update. But now after the update, it's even better. Because with this weapon, it not only received the buff of the Colossal Weapons, it also got an individual buff to its ability. They decreased the FP cost, they increased the cast speed, and they decreased the recovery time, and then they increased the frost buildup effect during the skill's duration. So this thing costs less to use, it swings faster, it does even more frost buildup than it did previously, and this is just a great, great weapon. And now you can get its frost ability off even faster and more often, and it costs less. You can get frost to proc quite often using this weapon now and when you get frost to proc on an enemy it will take even more damage so this is just a really good solid weapon now one of the downsides is that it does take 38 intelligence and 16 strength and 11 dexterity so you kind of have to spread out your skill points quite a bit there and you do have to put a lot of points into intelligence to use this thing but trust me it's pretty worth it this thing got a pretty massive buff in this update and i think it's a good solid a tier now so up next is the death poker now before my last video, I didn't know that this weapon even existed. I got so many comments saying, where's the death poker? It's the greatest weapon in the game. And why is death poker not on this list? And I was so confused because I'd never even heard of the death poker. But after getting the death poker and playing around with it, I agree with the people in the comments in my previous video. I think 
think this is an easy S tier. The Death Poker is just amazing. Now the Death Poker does frost build up and it does a lot of frost build up. Every single attack you do with this weapon is going to do some frost damage. Unlike a lot of the other weapons in this game where you have to activate its specific ability to get frost damage to proc, this weapon will do frost damage with every single swing, which is crazy good. And what's even better about this weapon is that it comes with two unique special abilities. Now its unique skill is called Ghost Flame Ignition. So you hit the left trigger ability and it throws out this little like ghost flame ball. And then you have two different options. You can either come in with a heavy swing and it does this big ghost flame explosion, which can do a lot of damage if an enemy's sitting still, or you can come at it with a light attack, which will send the ghost flames forward on the ground. And then any enemy that's sort of standing in the flames will take damage over time. So this weapon can straight up just melt the health bar of bosses that are standing still or that don't move that much. So if you get a knockdown on the boss and they're sort of knocked out or dazed, this weapon is great at just doing a ton of damage really fast. And I was super impressed with the frost build up on this weapon. I just couldn't believe how much I was getting the frostbite effect to activate on bosses and different enemies when I was using this thing. So I think the death poker is definitely S tier. It's a really, really great weapon to use. And if you guys are a fan of frost build up, definitely go out and get it right away. So up next is Eleanor's Pole Blade. So this is yet another bleed weapon and this thing does a lot of damage. This weapon is very similar to the Rivers of Blood, which I ranked S tier in my last video. I still think the Rivers of Blood is one of the best weapons in the entire game. The PvP community absolutely despises the Rivers of Blood. I despise Rivers of Blood in PvP. The Rivers of Blood is just nasty. It, it's pretty broken. And the Eleanor's Pole Blade is pretty similar. It's not as good as Rivers of Blood, but it's definitely up there. If you don't have the Rivers of Blood for whatever reason, or maybe you missed out on it, definitely go out and get the Eleanor's Pole Blade. The left trigger ability is just really fun to use and it can do a ton of damage. I always feel like Darth Maul when I'm using this weapon so that's definitely a plus but I do think there's a little bit more skill to using this weapon in comparison to the Rivers of Blood. So the Rivers of Blood I gave an S tier in my last video but for the Eleanor's Pole Blade I'm going to put it at A tier just because there's a little bit more skill involved but it's still a really really great weapon. So up next is another colossal weapon and it's the Giant Crusher. Now I've seen different build videos out there where people are dual wielding the Giant Crusher and they're just one shot killing bosses with jump attacks and stuff. So this weapon has crazy potential, but I'm not going to rank this weapon based off of what it can do with all the different spells and incantations and if you're on New Game Plus and you have two of the same weapon and I'm just going to rank this on its own. This colossal weapon is really good and you feel like a badass when you're using it. You feel like you're just super strong because this thing is just so gigantic. But there are some downsides and I do have some nitpicks with this weapon. For example, the weapon is so big that sometimes it gets in the way of the screen. Like I'll be in certain boss encounters where a boss is really, really fast and agile and I can't see what move or ability they're trying to do because the hammer's taking up so much of my screen, it makes it kind of hard to dodge and get out of the way sometimes. So I don't like that it takes up so much of the screen. And the other downside is that there's only so many moves that this thing can do. With other colossal weapons, there's different types of swings. You can do like fast swings or pokes or heavy swings or jump attacks. With the big giant hammer, there's only so much you can do because it swings so slowly. It basically comes down to just doing jump attacks and spamming jump attacks over and over. So I don't think it's that fun to use because you're kind of limited to how many different attacks that this thing can pull off. So this thing has potential to be S tier if you bump it up, but I'm ranking it just on its own. And just on its own, I think it's a B tier just because it only has so many moves and it takes up your whole screen. That and it requires you to have 60 strength, which is a lot for most players to have. So it definitely has some crazy requirements. So up next is a weapon that I previously didn't like at all. Honestly, I thought this weapon kind of sucked and it's the God Slayer's Greatsword. But after the latest update, I can confidently say that this weapon is really good now. Now it comes with the unique skill, the Queen's Black Flame, uh, where you basically just set the sword on fire and it does black flame damage. And this weapon does a great job of catching enemies on fire with the black flames, which will burn them over time. But what's so cool about this weapon now, outside of the faster swing speeds and the just overall buffs that it got, they actually added the ability to cancel its animations. So before you were pretty much locked in place, if you were activating its abilities, 
you were stuck using its abilities and you would constantly get knocked out of the animation and you would take a lot of damage. Well now you can activate the left trigger ability and anytime you feel like you're going to be in danger you can cancel the animation and safely dodge or get out of the way. That alone makes this weapon immediately just way way better. If you guys are a fan of black flame weapons then this is a must have. I think the buffs really made this weapon a lot better. Before I probably would have put this weapon at like C or D tier but now I think it got so much better that I'm going to put it straight up to A tier. So up next is another weapon that I really enjoyed but I thought was just kind of lacking. But since the latest update it got a buff and now it feels like a completely different weapon. And it is the Grafted Dragon. Now this is one of the weapons that I used in my first playthrough for the longest time. I loved the left trigger ability but the downside to it was that it took ages to get off. It does a high amount of damage and can do a crazy AoE effect and can just light everything on fire, but it would take so long to get off, it just wasn't worth using. Well, since the latest update, they buffed it and made it even faster to use its left trigger ability, and because you can get its special ability off even quicker now, it immediately makes this weapon just really, really good. So what's so cool about this weapon is that it's a fist weapon, so it's really fast to swing. If you want to do high amounts of damage really fast, you can just swing, swing, swing with this thing. It does a great job of taking out smaller enemies and it can passively set enemies on fire. So the more times you punch an enemy, the more likely they are to catch fire, which is neat. And the left trigger ability does crazy damage to bosses. So if you catch a boss off guard or if you knock a boss down, the left trigger ability is going to do insane insane damage if you can hit them with it. It's basically just an uppercut that will just breathe fire directly into their face. I was kicking the crap out of Crucible Knights and this misbegotten warrior that I've been fighting over and over in this video. This weapon basically just got a complete overhaul and I recommend everybody use it now if you weren't already and it is an easy A tier. So up next is a colossal weapon that is called the Great Sword. So that's a little confusing but the Great Sword is basically a colossal weapon that is the equivalent to the Bloodhound's Fang. Just imagine the Bloodhound's Fang and all the different opportunities and abilities that you can do with that, but as a colossal weapon. So this thing just became way more powerful in the latest update. It has crazy long reach because of how long the weapon is. You can swing it really fast. It can block as well as small and medium shields, so you basically don't need a shield if you're going to use this. You can light the sword on fire or give it different greases or incantations, so you can have that working for you. And then you can put a bunch of different Ashes of War on it to give it some customization. So overall, this is a great great weapon to use now. If you guys are a fan of colossal weapons, I think this is one of the best colossal weapons in the game right now, and I'm going to put it up at A tier because, like I said, I think it's the equivalent to the Bloodhound's Fang, just in a colossal weapon form. So up next is Mogwins, or Mogwins, however you say it, Sacred Spear. Now a lot of people were mentioning this in my previous video because this weapon does a crazy amount of bleed damage, and believe it or not, this weapon actually got buffed too. They made the animations faster, which is greatly appreciated. But I'm not the biggest fan of this weapon. I think it's a good weapon. I just don't think it's as good as everyone makes it out to be. Now the bleed damage is crazy. Like the bleed damage is nuts if you can get the special left trigger ability off. The problem that I was having is that it's still just so slow that it's hard to ever get the full effect of the left trigger ability because the bosses in this game are so fast and so aggressive. It's just so hard to get through all three phases of the animation. It's just so rare to get the chance to do that. And I also noticed that the left trigger ability doesn't do the greatest job of staggering enemies so if you're swarmed by a bunch of enemies you better hope to kill them right away or they're going to just easily knock you out of the animation but because i'm not a big fan of its special ability i'm going to put it at b tier i just don't think it's that easy to use in comparison to some of these other weapons i think you kind of have to get lucky with the left trigger ability and there's a lot of timing and skill involved with that uh, so i think b tier is a good place for that hey it's me from the future while i'm editing this video i'm actually changing my mind on this weapon i played with it a little bit more and i might not be a big fan of the animation but the bleed damage is way better than i thought it was the bleed damage is absolutely insane so I'm going to bump it up to A tier. For the rest of this video, it's going to be in the B tier category. So it's really good. Just ignore my B tier ranking. I think it's an A tier. So up next is the Golden Order Great Sword, which received some buffs in the latest update. Now the Golden Order Great Sword is a weapon that I've never been a fan of. I, I just don't like this weapon. And after the latest update, I was testing it some more and I still don't like this weapon. Now they gave a buff to its animations to make them faster and they made its special left trigger ability even faster, but still, 
I just don't like it. I still don't think it's fast enough. When you hit the left trigger ability, it does this like explosion of holy damage, and then you do this swing, and then you have a follow-up attack, which sends out this wave of holy damage. The problem I have is I feel that it's still too slow. You kind of have to do it at a distance, and it just doesn't do enough damage and it doesn't do a great job of staggering enemies. I feel like if you're going to use it for ranged attacks, I feel like there's other weapons in this game that have ranged attacks that are just way better than this sword. Uh, for example, the Halo Scythe that I ranked in my last video, I think it does a better job, or the Dark Moon Great Sword. I think there's just better options out there, and I'm just not that big of a fan of this Great Sword, so I'm putting it at C tier. So up next on the list is the Falling Star Beast Jaw. And I gotta say this weapon caught me completely off guard because I didn't realize just how good this weapon is. Now this is also a colossal weapon, so it received all of the buffs, but this thing is crazy. All you basically have to do is spam its left trigger ability and win the game. It is so good. For example, look at me fighting this dragon. It takes just two or three hits of the left trigger ability before it will stagger the dragon. That is nuts. It does insane damage. So all I had to do in this dragon fight was spam the left trigger ability one or two times, run up to its weak spot, and do tons of damage, and then get out of the way and wash, rinse, repeat. The left trigger ability is so good on this weapon, I feel like it's going to get a nerf, because it will just wreck bosses. If there's some sort of annoying creature or a knight or something that you just don't want to get up in your face, definitely use the Falling Star Beast Jaw because it has one of the best ranged attacks in the game, and it does crazy high damage when you're using it just as a normal colossal weapon as well. So the combination of all colossal weapons getting a buff to their swing speed, and this thing's left trigger ability just being so good, I have to give the Falling Star Beast Jaw an S tier. I can't believe I was sleeping on that weapon and I just didn't know how good it was. I was carrying that thing around my inventory for ages and I just never gave it a chance. And now that I tested it out, I think this is going to be one of the primary weapons that I'm going to be sticking to for quite some time. So up next is a weapon I've not seen too many people talk about and it's the Rotten Great Axe. Now this is a colossal weapon, so obviously it got a buff like all the other colossal weapons on this list. But this weapon by default causes Scarlet Rot build up. And what's so cool about this weapon is that you can put different Ashes of War on it too to give it other effects as well. So what I did with this weapon was put the Royal Knight's Resolve on it, which is a skill that greatly powers up your next attack. And with that, I combined Poison build up. So on my Rotten Great Axe, it does 170 Poison build up and 65 Scarlet Rot build up. And this thing hits super hard. I was actually getting tons of shield breaks on the Crucible Knight. I was basically bullying the Crucible Knight with this axe, and I always struggle with Crucible Knights for whatever reason. I just have always hated Crucible Knights, but I was just beating the crap out of the Crucible Knights with this Rotten Great Axe, and this Great Axe does a great job of staggering bosses. It just hits really hard, and because of all the poison and Scarlet Rot buildup that it does, it just ticks away at bosses' health, and I think this is a weapon that more people need to talk about. I was using it for probably 20 to 30 hours worth of gameplay. I highly recommend it and I'm putting it up at A tier. So up next is the Royal Great Sword, which is a colossal sword, which comes with the unique skill Wolf's Assault. When you use the special ability on it, it does this forward somersault into the ground and just does this big explosion of frost damage. And I don't really have too much to say about it. I mean, it's an okay weapon. It definitely got buffs from this update. It's just not as good as some of the other frost weapons. Like if you're going for just straight up frost damage, I would go with the Death Poker instead. But this is definitely a good choice. It's a good all around weapon. It's just not going to like insta kill bosses for you or put the game on easy mode by any means uh, so i'm going to put it at b tier just because i think it's a good average weapon I, I think if you make your entire build around it you can make it even better but i think it's at a good spot at b tier so up next is the scar swords great sword which you get from beating radon and this weapon is pretty unique because if you decide to dual wield it it actually pulls out a second one and then you have two of them which is pretty cool. And then its unique skill is the Starcaller Cry, where you bring the two swords together and roar into the skies, and then it sucks all the enemies in, and then you slam down on the ground with a follow-up attack, and it just does a ton of damage. This is great at dealing with a bunch of enemies simultaneously. I think it's really fun to use and really cool. The only problems with it is that I feel like the animations are pretty slow. I feel like if they increase the swing speeds just a smidge more with this weapon in particular, I think it would be even better. But for me, honestly, I wasn't too, too 
impressed with it. I do think it's a good weapon. I'm sort of torn between A tier and B tier though, but I think for this video, I'm going to put it at B tier, but let me know what you guys think down in the comments. The update that came out this week for Colossal Weapons is still fairly new, so let me know down in the comments if you guys think it belongs in A tier or S tier. And then for the final weapon on this list, it's the Magma Worm Scale Sword. Now, I thought this weapon sucked before this update. I was not a fan of this weapon at all. I tried it, my friends tried it, we pretty much came to the agreement that this thing was just bad. Its left trigger animation was just way too slow, the enemies didn't really seem to care about the lava that spewed out onto the ground, and it just wasn't a good weapon to use. But in this update, this weapon received a buff. They decreased the stamina cost that it takes to use the special ability. They increased the cast speed and they decreased the recovery time on the follow-up input. So because of all these changes, it actually makes a huge difference and I was absolutely demolishing bosses. At this point in the video, you've seen me fight the same misbegotten warrior and crucible knight just over and over and over. And this was by far one of the fastest times I just melted their health bars. This weapon, I feel like they secretly buffed it and they just didn't put it in the patch notes because it is crazy good now. I've used it in a number of different scenarios. I've used it against a bunch of different bosses and for some reason it is just melting bosses health. I don't know if it's because of the quicker follow-up attack or they secretly just buffed the lava damage that it does, but it is just really, really good now for some reason. And it feels like the lava stays on the ground a little bit longer than it previously did. So anytime an enemy is standing in that lava, it's just going going to eat away at their health like crazy. This weapon definitely caught me off guard. I'm glad I tested it out because I thought this weapon was so bad I wasn't even going to include it in this video. And I think it's so good that it's an easy S tier now. So, trust me, go out and try out this weapon if you haven't already. It will just eat away at bosses. It's nuts. But that is going to sum up all the weapons that are in this video. I know this video is a longer one. Uh, so if you guys made it this far, I appreciate it. Thank you guys so much. If you guys enjoyed it, please consider hitting the thumbs up button. It's greatly appreciated. If you're new here, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell for notifications. Let me know what you guys think down in the comment section down below. If there's any weapons that you would like to see me rank in the future, or if you guys would rank these weapons differently than what I did, let me know what your guys' thoughts are down below. And that is going to do it for me everyone and I will talk to you all in the next video.